Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of the real estate numbers in the Arizona market. We kind of take a look at things nationally, and uh, none of it makes absolutely any sense. So um, I wasn't here yesterday. Um, my little senior analyst, here he is right here. Um, I've only had this little bugger a month, and uh, he came down with valley fever. And so he ended up in the doggy hospital on uh, Saturday, mo Friday, Saturday morning at 3.30 a.m. And Saturday night, we didn't think he was going to make it. Valley fever, for those that don't know, is a fungus that comes up from the desert soil. Gets into your lungs. It's really brutal for, uh, for people. And I didn't realize that the dogs could get it as well. He already had pneumonia. He recovered, and then it just came raging back on Friday. So, so anyway, had to go get him yesterday, and uh, he's... Uh, um, he had a rough beginning of the night last night, and he's doing much better this morning. He's clearing up. That's that's good to hear. So what we want to do is we want to look and see some of the reasons why inventory is not going up, and the short answer is nobody really knows. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's, uh, that's all we got here this morning. So <laughs> where are we at today? We only have 4,850 homes on the market for a Tuesday. And that looks like this over yonder. Um, you can see that right here, the red line is number of homes going under contract. The blue line, number of listings coming up is slightly higher, uh, which is an improvement versus last year. But most of this is kind of hanging in right where it was in 2021. In fact, it's so eerie how, how things are just staying the same. And we look at um, active listings right here. <clears throat> Look at that. It's going down almost identical to last year. It's not even moving a smidge. It's just right following right along. And uh, just about every category we take a look at. And then we look at prices. And here's what's happening to pricing. So when you don't have inventory, you still have some sales. Uh, prices are going to go up and they're going to continue to go up. Uh, a couple of things that I want to look at that I saw yesterday in a presentation from the Crawford Report. And I got to get rid of that. That's not what I wanted. And that is how much of this, um, so what's going on in our market as far as who owns the homes? You can pull this stuff from the county records, but we also depend on getting some really good information from the uh, census. Well, in 2020, the census did not go well. You couldn't send people out door to door. A lot of people weren't filling out their information. So the information is just dripping in and it's not as accurate as we would hope it would be. But here's what we know in this market, and that is that owner-occupied normally runs from 70 to 76% of all of our homes uh, out there. And right now, we're at 63%. So if I drill down a little bit here and take a look at what we're looking at, we're saying iBuyers make up 4%. They make up a larger percent of sales, purchases, um, but they don't hang on to them. So they, they come and they go. They sell them either to individual investors, which is this 19% number right there. I believe that's the one it is. Yes. And then 14% is second home. Now, the second home number has grown. It used to be 7%, 10%, 8.5%. So this is done by quarter. So we've got 3.7%, let's see, 13.7% of second homes. And so it's taken our owner-occupied homes down to 63%. Is this significant? Well, like anything else in inventory, it's, it's having an impact. Um, that's homes that probably could have been made available to, you know, you and me, but they're not, it's not happening. <clears throat> the other thing we're seeing, let's take a look at what affects supply. So what affects supply is new homes. New construction adds more homes overall total housing supply, but most are not counted in the supply for the MLS. So there's been comments made on my channel saying, you know, you got to look at all the new construction. Well, we're looking at building permits and comparing them to years past, and we're not at where we were in 2004 as far as new builds. And all of that is in the outlying areas. So there is a lot of new construction. You can see it affecting the city of Maricopa. Now, Maricopa, of all the other cities, when you look at the Cromford Market Index, they're down to like 220. And remember, a balanced market is 100. So they have new construction down there. It's been going on for quite some time. And they're nice homes. 
and it's close enough to the valley where people are going down there and scooping them up so it's increasing the supply of resale homes for sale by owners not counted in supply because they're sold outside the local mls i don't see a lot of what we call fizzbos i don't see a lot of them out there right now foreclosures we're not seeing any of those uh, relocation outbound when household leaves the in area entirely one vacant home is added to the supply well, people are moving here. We're not moving out. So there's an inflow surplus versus an outflow. Uh, divorce, illness, death, job losses, tragedy. Uh, that can add to supply, but it isn't. that really hasn't changed. And then there's consumer sentiment. Emotions such as euphoria, utter despair, based on speculative opinions, blah, blah, blah. So that's what affects supply. But I tried to do some digging on airbnbs and it's impossible to pull up and see how many are out there you would think you could just go take a look so i went to the airbnb site and i put in the third week of june monday to friday i mean who's going to come to july or come to phoenix right before the fourth of july the third week of june when it's um oh, 117 119 so i thought well i can put that in and see what's going on gray says i need a realtor give me a call I'll be happy to help you Take a look at this. I pulled up Airbnb, and the only thing I was able to get, same with VRBO, 300 plus stays in Scottsdale. So there's more than 300 options that you have in Scottsdale. Well, add that up. You've got uh, Scottsdale, Chandler, Phoenix, Carefree, Cave Creek, Gilbert. There's probably several thousand homes that are under Airbnb or VRBO. How long will that continue? That's that's unknown. Um, it'll take a massive change in tourism for those numbers to dwindle. If if people um, uh, are doing okay and they're getting cash flow on their Airbnbs, they're going to keep them. Um, there's a lot of upkeep in keeping an Airbnb. Quite the industry out there for managing them. Uh, I know I have a friend up in the Northwest that's got a, a young couple that manages their their Airbnb and I think they get about 30 percent so you know there's a lot there's quite a lot of things you need to consider if you're going to have an Airbnb and then when we had spring training canceled in March um, people start selling like crazy all of a sudden the next week there were these homes for sale that were fully furnished uh, we have a comment that says for your inventory and contract data do you have the transfer data I'm curious if there are sales that are happening without being MLS listed off the books I see it a lot in Gilbert. Yeah, that has to show up in county records. I don't have access to grab that right now. I kind of rely on the Cromford report to go get that for me, but you are correct. There's a lot of homes that just quite honestly um, get sold and resold without being listed on the MLS. I don't know how big that number is, though. Um, there's a lot of wholesaling going on. Wholesaling is a um, you don't even need your real estate license to do this. You just go out and write a contract on a home and then sell the contract to, uh, to an investor. So you go out and pick up a home for 250000 You turn around and sell it for two seventy five. You made fifteen grand just by processing the paperwork. A lot of that going on. And uh, some people do very, very well. Uh, but it's risky because you could end up owning that home and uh, you didn't really want to. You didn't have the money to do it. So... Um, the other thing that's going on with our inventory is that people are locked into their homes now with a very low interest rate and they just know that they can sell and you can make a pretty penny but where are you going to go so if you're in a position where you can sell and you don't really have to buy anything right now that's something to consider and people are starting to kick that around but based on the numbers we're looking at right now the next three to six months it, it warrants hanging on to your home uh, we're not seeing any changes in the numbers that say you should hurry up and sell because um, those numbers will start showing up. I saw one yesterday on rental prices from the Cromford report. And then she had a, uh, they have a weekly update that uh, Tina Tambor does. And she actually showed that rent leveled off. Now, one week doesn't make a trend, but what she said was if rent levels off and rent starts dipping, that's the first indication that our market's going to change because we have such a huge investor pool of people buying homes to rent that could change but it hasn't shown any indication yet outside of just that one week dip now i buy the cromford market data on a monthly basis a lot of agents just rely on the weekly meetings that they see with title companies through a zoom call but i like to be able to go in and just drill in 
on numbers in individual neighborhoods and uh, spend probably way too much time doing that. But uh, it's helpful to be able to know the market and see what's going on. It's just uh, we're one of the only markets in the country that have a service like the Cromford Market Index that's run by a uh, very, I think, genius mathematician. And he's actually in England right now. Other news, Fed's George calls for sharp reduction in the size of the $8.9 trillion balance sheet. This will have an impact. This means this is the Kansas City Fed chief saying it's time to pull back. Said the economy is fundamentally sound and should expand at a healthy pace 2022. In light of steady growth and soaring inflation, she said it's time for the Fed to jettison easily easy money policies adopted in the pandemic. That's a rate increase, folks. So we're at, I think, uh, 3.68 today on a national average. And so if the Fed really starts pulling back, the bond market will react and uh, they will raise rates. Now, they said they're going to raise it uh, probably two times in March. Uh, that's already been priced in to the market. How high we have to go to where it starts affecting sales is unknown right now. Uh, if you take a look at the home prices, how they've escalated and just the little move in, it's a huge move over a two-week period, but historically it's a small move. In interest rates up, you know, the price of purchasing a home has gone up. It used to be pretty easy to say, look, the average rent is 2200 bucks. The average purchase is $2,000 a month. Um, you should purchase. Well, right now, they're at par. The average rent's 2200 a month. The average purchase price based on your income is 2200 a month. The average income that you need to buy the average home in our market now is $97,000. And currently, our average income is about $79,000. So that will start to change the dynamics of our real estate market over time. The only thing that's holding that up right now is investor traffic. And the investor traffic and the investor purchases are out there because they're getting a good return on their money for rentals. And that's, uh, that's going to have to change. Until that changes, uh, we're not going to see a huge growth in income or in uh, inventory. So let's say that that rental number, you say where rent's starting to come down, uh, they may not come in and purchase in this market as much as they can, as much as they are. They'll go to another market. They won't sell our existing inventory unless rent plummets. And as far as, for, far as forbearance turning into foreclosures and adding to the inventory, that, that's a great big nothing burger. We're not going to see that. So that's where we're at with inventory today. I appreciate you guys hanging in here today. Have a great Tuesday. Take on the rest of the week.